few things you might not know about Navarre, Florida. Number one, why is the sand so sugary white? Navarre Beach has some of the whitest and cleanest sand in the world. The sand is nearly pure crystal quartz. The quartz erosion from the Appalachians traveled to the Gulf of Mexico through the Apalachicola River. Due to the long traveling distance and years of wave action, the white watt particles broke down to make the sugary white soft sand that is visible and enjoyed today. This white sand is one of the reasons why we see the emerald green color so well as the sun reflects off the quartz sand at the bottom of the gulf. Which brings us to number two, that beautiful emerald green watercolor of the gulf. While the sand is bright white and the water crystal clear, the main attribute that creates the green color is the natural algae. The combination of the sun reflecting off the white sandy bottom and the water's algae density depicts the shade of green that we will see. No worries though, this is a cleansing, beneficial algae and contributes to the already clean waters. Number three, did you know Navarre Beach has the longest fishing pier in Florida? The pier is 1,545 feet long and towers 30 feet above the Gulf of Mexico. You can take a walk in the Navarre Fishing Pier for only a dollar. A daily pass for fishing is $7 for adults and $6 for senior and active duty military. It costs $4 for youth and children five and under are free. There's even a restaurant on the pier called Windjammers. The water below the pier is so clear you can almost always spot schools of fish and stingrays you might even see sea turtles, dolphins, and sharks out on their own fishing expedition. Next up, number four, the Navarre Beach Marine Park. The Marine Park has artificial reefs for scuba diving and snorkeling, a marine science center, and a sea turtle conservation center. The Marine Science Center offers hands-on experience that teaches you all about the local marine ecology, conservation, and environment. The Science Center is open to the public free of charge from sunup to sundown daily. The Sea Turtle Conservation Center has exhibits where you can both learn about and see various marine life, such as seahorses, lionfish, and their resident turtles, Sweet Bee. Those artificial reefs bring us to number five on our list. There are three different artificial reefs around Navarre Beach, East Side Sound Reef, West Side Sound Reef, and the Gulf Side Reef. They're all relatively close to each other near the Navarre Beach Marine Park on Navarre Beach. The reefs consist of thin concrete discs covered in Florida limestone rock and mounted on environmentally friendly composite pilings, which are then driven into the seabed. The reefs are located only a few hundred feet offshore, allowing you to easily view incredible marine life like sea turtles, urchins, jellyfish, octopus, and colorful fish. Have you heard of the movie Jaws? Well, number six on our list is the filming of Jaws 2. The movie was mostly filmed right here on Navarre Beach in 1977. Navarre Beach was chosen for the majority of filming because of the mild fall and winter climate and the ideal depth of the water. The production company built props to make the Navarre area look more like the east coast of Martha's Vineyard. They built a full-size lighthouse and an island on a floating barge called Cable Junction. While filming there, real hammerhead sharks circled the teen actors during the filming of one shot. Because the characters they were playing were meant to be in distress, the crew, because they were filming from a distance, they didn't even realize the actors were generally calling for help. They also recruited members of the local Gulf Breeze High School Band to perform in one of the early scenes of the movie, which was filmed in our own Navarre Holiday Inn, known as the Holodome. Unfortunately, the Holodome was destroyed by Hurricane Ivan in 2004. Next up, number seven. Navarre Beach is actually on leased land. Navarre Beach is a barrier island between the Gulf Islands National Seashore and the border of Eglin Air Force Base property. Escambia County actually owns the property but leases the land long term to Santa Rosa County. There is only a four mile stretch of Navarre Beach that can be built on so we will always have untouched access to the beach. Number 8. Navarre is not actually a city. It is an unincorporated community in Santa Rosa County. Number 9. The Navarre Black Hawk Memorial. The memorial, located in Navarre Park, honors the four Louisiana National Guardsmen and seven Marines who died when their Black Hawk helicopter, Mojo 69, crashed into the sound in heavy fog during a training exercise on March 10, 2015. Number 10. Famous People from Navarre Guy Wyman. The founder of Navarre was a colonel in the United States Army. He initially platted the town in 1925 when his family visited the area. His wife, a French nurse, actually named Navarre after a province in Spain near France. 
Matt Cronin, a 2016 Navarre High School graduate who is a relief pitcher for the Washington Nationals. Jordan Leggett, who was a tight end for the Clemson Tigers, New York Jets, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, also graduated from Navarre High School in 2012. Michael Carter, a 2021 NFL football draft prospect who was a running back for the North Carolina Tar Heels, was also a Navarre graduate in 2017. Navarre Beach has been and still is a popular vacation destination for other famous people as well. For example, Matthew McConaughey spent his summers as a kid on Navarre Beach. Vampire author Anne Rice bought a condo on Navarre Beach in the 1990s. Professional wrestler Mick Foley once owned a gym not too far away. And Elvis Presley is rumored to have visited around the 60s and 70s. I hope you've enjoyed learning about some of the unique things about Navarre and Navarre Beach. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button for a new video every Wednesday.